Open your Bibles this morning to Luke chapter 24. We'll begin reading verse number one. The word of the Lord says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. He is not here. He is risen. Do you not remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. And I want to minister the title of this message, just preaching a few minutes, Remember His Words. Remember His Words. And His Words is more than just the words spoken in the Gospels. This is His Word from Genesis to Revelation. Remember His Words. Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we're so grateful for the Spirit of the Lord that is in this house. We thank you for every service that we have had in this resurrection camp meeting. We thank you for everyone that is gathered here from not just points across the United States, but from literally around the world, and those that are joining us by SBN. I ask for your anointing this morning to help me to deliver this word, and we give you all the praise and glory. And everybody said amen and amen. In the summer of 1974, our nation found itself in a crisis that we had never faced before in the history of this young republic. For the first time in our history, a sitting president would be impeached and be forced to resign from office. Of course, you know the story, Richard Nixon, Watergate, and that's what led to him having to resign. Because in 1972, a group of men under the auspices of the campaign to reelect the president are better known as creep. I think when people come up with some of these names, they need to look at what people can make out of it. Creep. That's what the campaign to reelect, it was called Creep. And these men, you know the story, they broke into the Watergate Hotel and to, to get information from the Democratic National Committee. And, you know, I, I, I keep up with politics and I love history. And in my study of history, that whole episode has to be one of the dumbest situations that ever came from the mind of dumb men. I mean, here was a sitting president so far above his opponent, George McGovern, in the polls that he literally could have stayed in his basement. And won in a landslide, and he did win in a landslide. Some of you will get the basement thing about 3 o'clock in this morning. <laughs> and 22 men were indicted and sent to prison. One of them was the special counsel to President Nixon. His name was Chuck Colson. In prison, in federal penitentiary, spent seven months in prison. He was given a book by C.S. Lewis and re after reading it on, on, entitled uh, Mere Christianity, and he read the book and his heart was convicted and he gave his life 
to the Lord. Well, when he got out of prison, of course, the secular news media was skeptical of his so-called uh, jailhouse conversion. Let me just say this. I don't care if it's the jailhouse or the outhouse. If you get saved, are you here this morning? If you, I don't care if it's your deathbed. All that matters is in that moment of time, you call upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so this, this uppity, smart aleck, know-it-all reporter, as most of them are, was interviewing him and, 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 and trying to make fun, didn't believe, yeah, this, this Christianity, this is a crutch. You're just doing this to curry favor from the people. So he began to ask him, you know, do you really believe in the Bible? And Mr. Colson said, yes, I do. Do you really believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin? Oh, yes, I do. But then he said, do you really believe in the resurrection? And Chuck Colson sat there for a moment and said, absolutely I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he, then he said something to the reporter that shocked him. He said, and you know why I believe in the resurrection? Because of Watergate. And the reporter was taken aback and said, well, explain this to me. He said, well, when you study the resurrection of Christ, and all of the people that were witnesses to Jesus Christ after his resurrection. And he said, for 40 years, every one of them never once denied the resurrection. He said, they were beaten. They were stoned. They were persecuted. They were mocked. They were put in prison, and eventually most of them forfeited their lives. But he said never once in those time frame of all of that persecution did one time did they ever recount that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And the reporter was looking at him, and he said, but when it comes to Watergate, he said, 12 of the most powerful men in Washington, D.C., he said, they couldn't keep alive for three weeks. <laughs> but he said, men after men gave their lives. They laid down their life because they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that that stone had been rolled away and Jesus Christ had come out of that tomb victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Somebody needs to shout this morning. He's alive. He's alive. Buddha is dead, but Jesus is alive. Muhammad probably never existed, but Jesus is alive. All of the millions of gods the Hindus worship, they're not real. They're a lie, but there is one God who came to this earth, took upon himself the total body of a man, flesh and blood, and died on Calvary's cross. And on the third day, no demon power in hell could hold him in that grave. No devil could hold him in that grave. And on the third, and on that third day, Jesus Christ, the King of all kings and the Lord of all, he walked out of that tomb victorious. Somebody needs to shout this morning. He's still delivering. He's still baptizing in the Holy Spirit. Had a dear brother just the other night here in this camp meeting. Came up to me. He said, Brother Donnie, I got to thank you. His voice broke. 
for what SBN has done in my life. He said, I was a practicing homosexual. He said, I'm living in Las Vegas. I went and moved into a little apartment, had a little TV. I didn't have it, didn't, wasn't hooked up to cable or satellite, just over the air. He said, I turned it on and began to flip through the over-the-air stations to see what I could get. And he said, I found SBN. And he said, my life was miserable. I had no peace. And he said, I f the first program I saw was Francis and Friends. And he said, when I turned it on, lo and behold, he said, your mother was on the phone with a former homosexual. And he was testifying to what the Lord had done in his life. And he was testifying how the Lord had broken that grip of that debauch, that horrible sin of homosexual. And I want to say this before I pause. I want to say it. If you watching my television right now, if you are a homosexual, if you are a lesbian, there is one who can set you free. We're not opposed to you. We are opposed to the sin that you're involved in, but we're not opposed to you. And we love you enough to tell you that there is a way out. We're here to tell you, you don't have to live in that sin. We're here to tell you that that bondage does not have to eat you up. But Jesus Christ can set you free, break that yoke, change the thinking of your mind, and give you completely new desires. And he said, I sat there, and I listened to that interview. He said, I watched the whole program. Even though y'all went on to other subject after that, I watched it. And he said, when it got through, I got down on my knees. And I said, Lord, if you can do it for whoever that man was, you can do it for me. And he said, I cried out to Jesus. And I saw him back there talk to him. He said, I want you to know, I am free. I am free. Listen to me, church. No pretend God can break the yoke of homosexuality. Only one who is alive today still performing miracles. Henry Morris, who was a, a Bible teacher, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He said this, the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the crowning proof of Christianity. He said, if the resurrection did not take place, then Christianity is a false religion. But he said, if it did happen, and it did, he said, then Christ is God, and the Christian faith is absolute truth. And it is true. It is true. 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent his only begotten son who stepped out of time and into eternity and was born of a virgin in Bethlehem and lived a sinless, spotless life and at 33 and a half years of age laid down his life and became the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, shed his blood that we might be resurrected into new life. Hallelujah. You know, another reason why I know the resurrection is real is because of you. Every one of you. Because you're saved. You are a living testimony. I like the way Paul, you are a living epistle of the fact that Jesus Christ is who he is. He did what he said he did. 
He died on that cross, but death could not hold him. And because he's alive, we shall live also. Somebody needs to shout. Your life, the very fact that you're no longer who you once were. Some of you, man, on, uh, some of you in your past life, on this day, resurrected, you got drunk. You'd go to parties, holiday, you get drunk. You know, I, you know I, I have to be a little blunt. Well, all of sin, first of all, is stupid. But drinking and drugging's got to be the two dumbest. I mean, you go out, they go out and they get plastered. I mean, plastered. They can't remember where they were. They can't remember what they did, and maybe that's a good idea. They're, 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 they, they, when they wake up, their head's been in the toilet, sick as a dog, their head pounding. Somebody asked them, what'd you do last night? I don't know, but I'm going to go do it again. <laughs> you know, the, the definition of somebody doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome, that's insanity. <laughs> and all sin is a form of insanity. But your life, your life is a testament to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We were all dead in sin and trespasses. AA cannot break that yoke. Drug Addicts Anonymous cannot break that yoke. Psychology cannot talk that bondage out of you. But because Jesus died on the cross, went to the tomb for us, came out of that tomb for us, Anyone, it doesn't matter who they are. If they will call upon the name of Jesus Christ, his blood will wash them and cleanse them. And at the moment of your conversion, you died. See, every one of you are a spiritual miracle. When you accepted Jesus, there was a death, not just the Lord's death, but spiritually, you died. Hello? You died. You died. And you were born again. You know, my, 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 I just, this story just popped into my head. And as I say, sometimes that can be dangerous because there's a lot of weird stuff up there. <laughs> and I just remember, just popped in my head, my dad's mother. My grandfather, my grandfather, my dad's father, W.L. Swagger, was 27 years old before he ever saw a Bible. Never seen one. Never read one. Never owned one. Had never heard a gospel song. Didn't even know Amazing Grace. He and my grandmother made their living at that time in the big, booming metropolis of Faraday, Louisiana, playing in dives and honky-tonks. But they got saved, and, but my grandmother was totally opposed to Pentecost. She thought, this is just crazy. This is just crazy. I'm talking about Jesus can change you. She, she oh, running in church. How uncouth. And it, look, look, I admit, at times we get a little exuberant. And sometimes people run. Sometimes they jump. Sometimes they shout. But you see, there's an explanation for it. When you plug into the right power source, there's going to be a reaction. And, and she, she was just determined. She, we're not going to have this. We're not going to have this. I'm, I'm not fooling with this. But they were having a prayer meeting at that little Assembly of God church. It's still standing 
in Faraday today. And she went, not that she wanted to, but you know, back in the, if the church door was open, whether you wanted to or not, you better go because somebody might say something. <laughs> little town, little church. And she went in, they were praying. Jerry Lee Lewis's mother was there. Mickey Gillies' mother was there. David Beatty's mother was there. And they got toward the end of that prayer meeting and Jerry Lee's mother had been at the altar praying. She got up, was walking back to her seat and got halfway and the power of God hit her. Knocked her flat of her back and baptized her in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. Mickey Gillies' mother got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And my dad's mother, my grandmother, had made her boast, these crazy people, I want them to know I will never run, I will never jump, I will never shout, I will never make a fool of myself like that. And all of a sudden, when the Holy Spirit got through with Jerry Lee's mother, got through with Mickey Lee's mother, that same power came all over my grandmother. And she started shouting when she started speaking in tongues. She danced all around that little Assembly of God church. She danced up and down the aisle. She hollered so loud that my daddy, Jerry Lee, and Mickey heard her three blocks away in Faraday, Louisiana. But here's what I want to tell you. When she came to herself, there was an old man in that church. I'm talking about a changed life. There was an old man named Brother Brown, and he was blind, and my grandmother could not stand him because he didn't bathe. He was not hygienically pleasing to her. And at times there was an aromatic flavor. And when she came to she had her arms around Brother Brown, shouting, saying, I love you, Brother Brown. I love you, Brother. That's what God can do. That, that's why I know the resurrection is real. It changes people. Oh, I got, I got to hurry. Just let me throw out some notes. I haven't, I'm still not, I don't even know if I'm on my introduction yet. The resurrection of Christ proves Bible prophecy. There's over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament dealing with Christ, either in his Messiahship, his birth, his death, or his resurrection. I love this one. Job said in chapter 19, he declared, brought out the sermon the other day, everything lost around him, everything destroyed, People making fun of him. Yeah, the church turned their back on him. His so-called friends, and with friends like Job, who needs enemies? <laughs> making fun of him. And, but Job stood up in the midst of mess, and he declared for posterity, I know my Redeemer lives. I'm not Job, but I want every newsman to hear me. If the White House, you bunch of... <laughs> Gabriel wasn't strong enough. Gabriel was How dare those bunch of reprobates, those demented minds that surround the president dare them take the most holy day that we Christians, that we wrote, stand together and come together to celebrate the resurrection of the King of Kings. How dare them besmirch this day of the Lord with that garbage and with that filth. God will judge you. God is going to judge you. But I got news for you. Today is the day of salvation. And if you will fall on your knees and repent, the blood of God's Son will cleanse you from every sin 
and him. This is why, I didn't come to say this, this is why we got to have a change in this country. This is why I come November, you dumb Christians. And I don't like his tweets. Who cares? The country is burning down. Our economy is going down. Our morality is down to zero. Crime is running rampant. Our big cities, drugs are ruining our big cities, are ruining every city. And we got it. Well, well, yeah, I don't agree everything the White House is doing, but I'm going to vote for it. Now, listen to me. Half the church don't like me anyway, so let's just make it good. Don't you dare insult the blood of God's Son and call yourself a Christian and walk into a polling vote and pull that lever or push that ballot down for any person or party that endorses homosexuality, that endorses lesbianism, that endorses transgenderism. You are guilty of the same sin. That blood is upon you. Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed. And every pastor that condones their people doing that, you're going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, and you're going to be judged for not standing for righteousness. We're not voting for a preacher. We're not voting for a spiritual leader. We're voting for somebody that's got a brain. Yeah. Well, I just don't see. It's the lesser to evil. <laughs> just st stop. Stop. Just stop. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> well, you know, he's not saying, I don't know if God can you. Let me, let me tell you, God can use a donkey. Hello? Hello? The Spirit, God's Spirit is strong enough to maneuver. If that person is even remotely sympathetic to the things of God. Oh, I, when, when, when 30, oh, this is in the, oh, well, this is probably in the, sit down, I'm not, in the early 80s. And we, we had a, Daddy tells this story, but he always tells it wrong. He, he don't, <laughs> he gets it wrong every time. I'm like sitting like, no, that ain't, ain't happened. No, 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 yeah, that's close. <laughs> but when you're 89, you're allowed a few allowances. We'd, we'd been in Detroit. I mean, we had a nine-week meeting at Brightmore Tabernacle. That's where I was received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 1967. You remember 67? That would be the summer of love. <laughs> if you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear a flower <laughs> in your hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it was the winter. But anyway, we, 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 not, but, we had, but we were in Cobo Arena, still there, right on the banks of the river, and right across the, from Windsor, Canada. And so we, we were, on, we're setting up, and all of a sudden a guy comes up. And you know, you know, some people can't handle authority. It goes to their head. And those kind of people, they just need to be... But anyway, he comes, who's in charge here? I am. Stop everything. I am the head of the Teamsters. <laughs> no, 
Not another pig. He took the turn of the union stage. Put it down. Go sit down. Not another piece of equipment will be unloaded off that truck or set uh, until you give me $50,000. And I said, we've got a contract with the union. It's already signed. I supersede the union. I am the Teamsters. Yeah, I'm a kid, but in my mind, I think, no, you're a thief. <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was just, well, I'm not going to be Christian now. He was just a jerk. <laughs> and, and so I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm a kid. I know what I do now. <laughs> but, but so I, 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 I run across the street to the hotel, get dad said, look, we got a problem. He gets dressed, he comes over. The guy's just giving daddy lip. Just, just, he's acting like that donkey. But I can't say the other word because a bunch of self-righteous Christians will have a corner and go to heaven. <laughs> but that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> With capital letters. I didn't finish it, and, and he, he keeps mouthing off to daddy, $50,000. They were not owed five cents. And so we're, we're, we're and, and he was, he was here, no, no money, no service. And about this time, this guy comes walking by, just walking through Kobo. He said, hello, Brother Swaggart. Wow, how are you doing? Walked over. Man, I, I, want you to te- I want you to know, I watched the, the ministry. Now, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit working on a sinner to do the right thing, okay? And so, he said, he, he said I sense there's a problem. Is there a problem? They said, oh, yeah, this, this man says he's over the Teamsters. If we don't pay him $50,000, we can't have a crusade. He said, oh, really? Excuse me. Now, I am not exact. I'm not speaking evangelistically, which means lying. (laughs) He didn't say hello to the guy. He didn't say, I need to talk to you. He walked right up and went, boom, and grabbed him around the neck. And there was a big concrete stanchion, and he pushed his back up against it, and started lifting him up. Ah! And he was going, who do you think you are? What are you, what are you going to charge this preacher? 30,000. <laughs> Bam! Hit his head on the wall. What? 20,000. Bam! Harder. What? 10, th- what? Nothing. 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 And then he, the guy, uh, not exactly, the guy went, shh, staggered up. Y'all have a good service tonight. Walked, and we're standing here like, what? What just happened? And there was a Cooper men in the corner. They said, who was that? They goes, oh. That was Jimmy Hoffa's former bodyguard. (laughs) Well, somebody needs to shout. So don't tell me the Holy Spirit, if that sinner has any inkling for the things of God, the Spirit of God can move him and position him to help the work of God. Somebody needs to shout. (laughs) Jesus prophesied. About his resurrection in Matthew 12, 40, he said, For as Jonah was three days in the belly of the whale, so too shall the Son of Man be three days in the earth. But he's coming back. In Matthew 17, he said, And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man will be traded into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. So, 
The bodily resurrection of our Lord proves, the prophecies prove the reality of the resurrection. The resurrection is the earnest or the down payment of the resurrection of the body of Christ that has come. Do you know another name for the rapture is the resurrection? Because Christ came out of that tomb at the sound of that trumpet, every single child of God in the world is leaving this earth. And we're going to be, whether you want to call it raptured or you want to call it resurrected, it means the same thing. Oh, hallelujah. As he was resurrected, so shall we be resurrected. Somebody needs to shout. Oh, what's that song? What's that song? Someday soon, church, I'm leaving. Going to a meeting around the throat. Come on, can I have some help here? Don't sit there and look at me like that. Come on now. I flunk music. I can't sing. I was trying to, mother, mother, mothers do that. She was trying to make me take piano lessons. And we were in Pontiac, Michigan, and I was like, nee, 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 nee. Daddy walked in, I, I just, this is what makes him a great man. He walked by, he just put his hand on the shoulder, he goes, that's all right, you ain't got it. I said, Hallelujah. No more piano lessons. Oh, the church, because of the resurrection, someday soon, someday, come on. Will someday soon, church time leaving, I'm going to go to the meeting right around the throng. Well, and I'm going to shout. I got to get through my introduction. <laughs> the resurrection guarantees our justification. Y'all don't leave. I might think of another song. <laughs> the resurrection guarantees our justification. Romans 4, 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Oh. The resurrection guarantees us eternal life. John 14, 19, Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. The resurrection guarantees us victory over death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them who slept. And verse 26 says, that last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now, that's my introduction. Okay, I got about seven minutes for my sermon. <laughs> when Christ was crucified, his followers were thrown into the most traumatic experience of their life. Even though he had told them 
what was going to happen. Still, the reality of it was far greater than they could comprehend. I mean, for three and a half years, the 12 to 70, they had been with him. Not just a day here, a day there, but seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They had seen him open blinded eyes. They had seen him raise the dead. They had seen him turn water into wine. They had seen him take the loaves and the fishes and break them and multiply, multiply and feed the multitudes. But now, he's gone. And their faith was shaken. Now, don't fuss at them because there's not a person in here that would have done any better. In this journey of life as a Christian, I wish I could tell you it's all peaches and cream. I, I wish I could tell you that there'll never be heartache or tears. You know, in my 69 years on this earth, I, I've, I've learned that life is not fair. I've suffered, I've had traumatic experiences where my faith was put to the test. And even though he had told them what was going to happen, the shock of seeing him hanging on that cross, disfigured, his beard ripped from his face. The crown of thorns and the head is the most tender part of the body. You can just nick it and it will pour blood. And those crown of thorns crammed upon his head, his head probably swelled to three or four times its normal size. His back laid open with the lictor's lash and every bit of it was for you and me. And they were shaken. I've been shaken. And if you haven't been shaken, hold on. Tomorrow's coming. You're going to face the death of a loved one. You're going to face a child that you love and you've tried to raise them right and yet... They're in sin, and not just a little sin, they're up to their eyeballs. You may experience the horror of a husband walking in saying, I don't love you anymore, or a wife saying, I'm leaving. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I read from medical doctors, they said the traumatic experience of a divorce in a person is second only to the death of a loved one. It caused, it's that much pain. And when that happens, the devil is gonna try to erase your memory. He's gonna fill your mind up with all of this bad stuff. And you, in this moment of crisis, you're gonna probably the devil's going to try to make you forget everything that this book has said. All of the promises from Genesis to Revelation. All of the benefits. So I, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. So I'll just give you some. When, when your heart is faint and discouragement, it's all you can see. Just remember these words. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of some, no, all of his troubles. Remember these words, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in my trouble, my time of trouble. Remember these words, they that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. Devil, I don't know when God's going to do it. Devil, I don't know how God's going to do it, but I'm going to believe he's going to do it. I'm going to renew my, oh. When fear overwhelms you, remember these words. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Remember these words. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. When you sin and you fail, remember these words. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we will confess our sin, he will forgive us our Somebody needs to shout. When you're sick in your body, you can remember these words. He is the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Somebody needs to shout. Remember his words. Remember the words of this. Oh, let me close. 17 years old, sing if you're there, okay. 17 years old. You know, 17 year olds, is, is Sam here today? Oh yeah, all, all my, I got two teenage granddaughters. They're gonna, they're gonna kill me after this. <laughs> but I'm right. From 13 to 19, ain't nothing going on up there. She's going, I mean, the lights are on, but you know, seven, there's a crisis every day. Somebody unfriended me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And 17, you're trying to figure out who you are you're trying to figure out your place in society. And so, one morning, and I don't know what, I, I got up and I just touched, as you yawn and you rub your, this right eye. All of a sudden, now you may think I'm crazy, I'm telling you, it started buzzing, literally buzzing. And all of a sudden, it began to swell until it was totally Swollen shut, and, I, and it took about three or four days for it to go down. Then it went away, but then a couple of weeks later, just touched the eye, and all of a sudden, again, and this started happening. And it was grotesque looking, completely swollen up. We went to the doctor, they gave me a series of tests, and they came back and said, you're allergic to so many things. And I said, well, why hadn't, why hadn't this Manifest for it just that's just the way it works. And you know, when you're 17, appearance is everything. You want to dress cool, you want to walk cool. <laughs> and you may not be cool, but you want everybody looking at you to think you're cool. <laughs> and you, you just, it, it would. I wouldn't leave the house. And it, we were in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Dad was holding a crusade. This was in the 70s, obviously. <laughs> and early, and, and, and 71, I think. And so, we were staying. Oh, I can remember it. Oh, right here. It's just planted in my brain. We were staying in the Kalamazoo Holiday Inn. And the reason why I remember it so vividly is because it had the ugliest puke green carpet. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it just looked like somebody had regurgitated all over it and just ground it in. It was horrible. And back then, every Holiday Inn looked the same. Bad. And I was in my room, mother and dad was in their room, and Sunday, we had three services in a crusade, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, two o'clock. And, and when I was 
traveling, we don't, when I was a kid like that, you know, daddy would put me to work. So I would work the product table. And man, was I a good salesman. <laughs> oh, if you get that album, you need to get this album. Because this album complements that album. I don't know if it did or not, but you know. If you listen to this album, but you don't have that, you're, you're missing out. Two is always better than one. So, got up that morning, woke up, and I stood up, and I went like that, and all of a sudden, bzzz, I'm kidding you, I'm not exaggerating, it's not funny, it just buzz, that eye. And it, it, would, it would puff out at least this far, and it would be close, couldn't open the eye. Allergies. And I picked up the phone, called mother. I said, mother, I can't go to church. My eye. And she knew, and she knew, she knew how bad it was. She felt for me. She's my mother. And so she said, well, we'll get back in bed. But about 20 minutes go by. And all of a sudden, there was a knock on the door. And I opened the door, that eye swollen up. And I don't know where mother got this. But for my teenage eyes, it looked like, with that one eye, it looked like the biggest Bible I'd ever seen in my life. It probably wasn't, but it looked like it was two times bigger than her. Maybe that was the Holy Spirit trying to show me how powerful the Word of God is. And she had that Bible in her arm. And she put that finger in my chest and started pushing me back. Now, she went and she started talking to I knew, I had enough sense to know, she really wasn't talking to me. She was talking to the evil one that was afflicting her son. And I remember she had his words. She pushed me in back in that room. She walked into that room, that door slammed, and she, she said, listen to me. With his stripes, we are healed. Then she said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Then she started reading. They brought the sick and the halt and the lame and the oppressed to him, and he healed every single one of them. And she started reading the Word. She remembered. She remembered in my crisis. I couldn't remember it, but she remembered the words. And she read the words. Then she looked at me. She said, in the name of Jesus Christ, devil, get your hands off of my boy. He is healed in the name of Jesus. And I'm standing there. She looked me right in the eye and said, you're healed, and don't you doubt it. Turned around and walked out. And I, I, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Did you see my mama? <laughs> whoa. Wyatt Earp, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> oh, mama. John Wayne can't hold a candle to mama. Mama. Ain't got a six gun, she's got a howitzer. Call the word of Almighty God. And I sat down on the edge of that bed, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. And I literally, within 30 seconds, I could feel the swelling leaving. And I walked over in a few minutes and I looked in that mirror. And that eye was the same size as this eye. Not a bit of swell. Stand to your feet this morning. Remember the words of the book. Don't let your circumstance and the trial of your affliction steal the truth of God's Word. Last statement, this book right here contains the answer to every problem that plagues the human heart. Every problem.
problem. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we celebrate this resurrection day, we thank you for your words. Your words are life. There is healing. There is liberty in your life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm not going to hold the point, but I cannot close this service out without just asking this question. Are you saved? Have you remembered his words? Today is the day of salvation. If you're not sure that your heart is right with the Lord, if you'll lift a hand, if you're praying, you can put your hand down because I don't want to get confused. But if there's anyone here before we dismiss, I need Jesus. If you would just raise your hand right where you are. We won't embarrass you, but we'll pray with you. There's a hand back there. Thank you. There's another hand back there. Anyone else? Quickly. There's a hand over there. I want you to step out right now. If you raise those hands in the back. I know it's a low distance, but I want you to step out from your seat. And I want you to walk down this aisle. And I want you to come stand right here. Come on right now. That's it. Come on, young people. Come on, start praying right now. Lord, we, by your spirit, move across this audience. Move across this audience. That's it. Come on. If you raise that hand, come on. Come on. There's room at the cross. There's room at the cross. There's room at the cross. Come on. Come on. at me right now every one of you that's come and I want to tell you this Jesus loves you doesn't matter who you are doesn't matter what you've done I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer and I'm going to ask you to say it with me but saying words have never said saved anyone to be saved you have to believe what the words represent I, by television watching on this resurrection Sunday if you're not sure Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life I want you to pray this prayer with them I'm even going to ask everyone in the building to stretch your hands toward them and say it with them so that their voices will not be alone now lift your hands those of you that have come understand here lift your hands as a sign of surrender and submission everyone say it with me right now and believe these words Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm, a sinner, I'm a sinner, but I know, but I know you, are the Savior. you are the Savior. I believe, I believe that, Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died, on the cross died on the cross and shed his blood, and shed his blood for, my for my sin. And I believe on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. And because he lives, I can live also. And right now, I surrender my past, my present, and my future to Jesus Christ. And right now, by faith, I can say, I'm saved. I'm born again. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Brother Lauren will be closing out this camp meeting. Well, look what the Lord has done.
Hope you enjoyed this camp meeting service from the Sun Life Broadcasting Network. 